Hi everybody, this is Bob. Today I'm working on a Heathkit IT121 transistor tester made by Heathkit. I'm turning on the lights here as I talk. I had those lights off because they reflected so brightly in the meter. <laughs> it doesn't seem to do it. Yeah, there they are. They're down there on the left hand side reflecting in the meter. I got three LED bulbs up there in a fixture. But uh, purchased this as a non-working unit on uh, eBay as is the price was eh, I thought it was a little much for what I got all the work that I had to do I put over 20 hours into restoring it to operating condition I did not paint the uh, cabinet here and I think obviously the cabinet was damaged by someone leaving the batteries in until they leaked and when they leaked they dripped on the cabinet and flowed all over so I cleaned it up and uh, and took out all the uh, remains of the battery fluid but uh, didn't do any more than that it doesn't look that bad the sides and all are are okay so I'm just gonna leave the case as is anyways uh, I got to checking this thing out and I found it did not work. I was talking to a friend of mine and he said, well, maybe it never worked. And I said, well, that's possible. I said, one thing's for sure, it's set in somebody's basement <laughs> or something like that for about 40 years. The brown case tells me that it was manufacturing during the brown period of the Heathkit kits. And uh, that would have been around uh, 1980 to 1985 when they manufactured all the brown colored kits. So, the first problem I found on this, and checking it out visually, I've been using this uh, Luxor head magnifier here, and I use, uh, I use uh, reading glasses with it. You know, if you put a pair of reading glasses on that are two power, and you have five power lenses in your Luxor headband magnifier, then you're getting a magnification of seven. In this case, I'm using three power uh, reading glasses with five power lenses in the Luxor headband, which gives me uh, eight power. And then I have the uh, little loop on the top there, the little loop right here, this little thing. Uh, that you can swing around and that adds another five power, I think. Man, does that magnify. And I need that with my 78 year old eyes. So, anyhow, some things to show you here. The first thing I repaired were the rivets on the battery holders. Now I could have put new battery holders in, but I'd had to get battery holders someplace. And uh, they cost money. But I found that these little rivets are made of brass. They have a silver plating on them. I don't know if that's chrome or silver or what it is but they were loose and these uh, little uh, terminals that they fit on there uh, with the rivets were just flopping around so you had intermittent connections on the battery connections and that was on all four of the battery connections so I got in there with my exacto uh, knife and a little tiny screwdriver and I scraped and I scraped and I scraped around there and I soldered those now you can solder those because they are on an insulator that is made of, uh, it's really cheap, uh, paper. These are washers made out of a very thick paper, but they will withstand the heat of soldering. So you can solder those on there. And I use some uh, liquid flux. Uh, the liquid flux I used was uh, liquid rosin flux for radio or radio electronics work got to be careful you don't use acid flux because acid flux will cause more problems but the uh, rosin flux does not so okay I took care of that another another thing I did I put new batteries in and right here on this battery you can't see it but I wrapped uh, scotch tape around twice all the way around the battery and I did it here now why did I do that because this plastic here that they put on the batteries is a heat shrink coating that is very very thin 
and these clamps clamp pretty tight and they have sharp edges in here which will cut through that coating on the battery and when they do they make contact with the negative part of that battery and in a lot of cases or some cases on equipment I know on some of the heat kit equipment on the SS9000 for example uh, the clamps like that will cut through that coating and short out one or more of the batteries so I wrap scotch tape around this area right here all the way around the battery twice so that when I snap it on there it has to cut through the scotch tape as well as cut through this heat shrink coating and uh, so that's an important thing to keep in mind you're putting new batteries in some equipment yeah, heath kit whatever it doesn't matter if it's got this kind of clamp those clamps can cut through this thin plastic coating on the modern batteries so we did that and then I squirted uh, control cleaner in the controls and I squirted control cleaner in the switches all of the switches and when I put it in the switches I worked each switch like 30 times up and down up and down up and down up and down yeah it's kinda kinda tiring to do all that on all these switches but uh, these had not been used and so the the pins inside I'm sure are corroded you can see on the outside here that some of these are corroded so I did that okay and I thought I would have a working unit ha 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 I was just getting started. So what I found also, uh, I, uh, I turned it on and, and it didn't work. Uh, these clamps that hold the uh, wires, there's a little part of one left right there. Uh, here's one right here. Oh, look at that. That one's just a little piece of it there yet. I'll take that out after I get done with the video here. But uh, these are to hold the wires in place and there were all broken so I have put little green tie wraps on there just to keep the wires bundled together and that keeps them in place so that takes care of that little problem alright so I worked and I worked and I worked to get this thing to operate and I could not get it to work and uh, I cleaned this circuit board with 90% uh, alcohol underneath here and I could not find any problems there. I examined the switches carefully with my uh, Luxor 8 power headband magnifier setup and I was not able to find anything there and so uh, I did order a uh, a replacement manual. This is a copy that uh, came from uh, the radio attic on the internet and I, I really like the way the guy uh, copied the manual and uh, he got it to me right away and I especially like the fact that I got the entire manual with the assembly. You will see this manual advertised on the internet at several locations and you will see writing on the front of it. There's some drawings and a circle and stuff on the front here. If you buy that one you will get the operating instructions in the manual but you do not get the assembly part of the manual and uh, and you can also find copies of that on the internet that you can look at or you can run off on your printer so here's the thing uh, after working and working and working and working I thought that I might just be able to run through the assembly procedure step by step and find the problem because I was fairly certain that sometime during the construction the original constructor had made a wiring error so uh, you can see the red check marks on here that's where I checked this checked that checked this and I went through the entire assembly part checking things off as if I was originally building the Heath kit and I finally found the problem that was causing it not to work for 40 over 40 years and it had just set somewhere and what that problem was let's see right here where this green wire is and goes back down in here there is another connector on that switch right next to it and when they put that green wire in they wrapped the wire close to the switch right down smack 
onto the surface here. I'm just showing on another switch, but right down smack on the surface here and around the pin. And when they went around the pin, the back part of the wire stuck out and touched the pin behind it. Those two pins go across a resistor here, 15 ohm resistor. Notice I had written, I don't know if you can read it, but right here I had written short. There's a short there. The resistor mounts on the other side of the board between here and here, and there's it was shorted. So I found that in going through the assembly instructions step by step. So that's why I'm glad I got the manual with assembly instructions. You will also notice in this unit a lot of globby solder stuff uh, up here, up here, and uh, and other places too. And the reason for that is I think that somebody had been working and working and working trying to fix this and uh, was checking all these different things. So the soldering in here is not the prettiest in the world, but it's all in there and all working. So anyways, uh, what I found then was that short on that one switch right here with this green wire. And if you should hear a little clicking on my videos, that is the lens, the automatic focus lens on my camera adjusting. And it goes click, 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 click. And so you can hear that once in a while. Anyhow, after I got in there with my little tiny itty bitty wire cutters and clipped that little piece of wire out that was shorting, I, uh, the thing started to work like it should. And it's working really good now. So anyhow, uh, and that wire was laying right flat down on top of the switch and it was covered with a glob of rosin flux. And you couldn't see it in there. And I was going to actually replace that switch because I was measuring a short there with my Simpson 260 meter on R times one. And I was going to pull that switch out. I had found another one. Uh, in another piece of uh, old equipment I have here that's that's trashed, I, I had a switch just like it. I want to take that switch out and I want to replace this one here. And so I got in there and I was ready to cut that green wire off and I scraped that little glob of flux off and I thought, oh my gosh, that wire wrapped around the base of that pin and was shorting to the pin next to it. So I clipped that out of there and it started working. How about that? So I just... Uh, then at that time, went ahead, checked it out, calibrated it according to the manual, and it is working great. I got a uh, MPF 102 FET in there, and to check an FET, you're supposed to uh, plug it into the socket there, uh, select FET right here, select GM equals zero, micromos zero. Now when you're checking FETs, the zero on the meter is up here. When you're checking uh, bipolar transistors, the zero's down here. <laughs> uh, nothing like a little confusion, right? Right. Okay, let's turn it on. And we want to zero it. Well, I've already got it. It's there. Uh, right onto that mark right there. That's your mark for calibration for uh, FETs. So I did that. Okay. And then we punch down here the GM equals zero. That's for your calibration. Then you punch read GM. And there she goes. So we're reading the red scale with the zero here and come around there and it's, it's just a little bit over five and it says right here micromoles times a thousand so it's a little over five thousand. I'd say 5100 micromoles for the MPF 102 here. Now you can do big FETs with this here by clipping onto them with the alligator clip leads. And uh, I really wanted this transistor tester uh, basically for one reason, and that is that we used uh, at Heathkit, we, some of the equipment has uh, matched transistors in it. And uh, pretty hard to get matched transistors sometimes, but uh, with this I can plug them in and I can match them. 
and uh, the finals on the SS9000 are a matched pair, for example. And I've got, I don't know, about six of them. And I was hoping that maybe if I check them all, I will find two that are close together, and I can use those as a, as a finals for uh, SS9000. So anyhow, uh, real happy with this. It's working just great now. And I wanted to show you guys what I did to get it going. And let's see, did I forget anything? I always forget something. <laughs> if I forget something, I usually put it in the description. So anyhow, we got six inches of snow yesterday. I got my snow blower out for the first time and snow blowed the driveway. So uh, it's pretty cold here too. We had 20 degrees last night. So with that, folks, I will say 73s and good D.